Hi, my name's Phil, I like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest accusation of electoral fraud on the part of the Conservative Party and expectations from the police investigation that has just been announced. But first, if you'd like to receive notifications for my new videos then please click the subscribe button and also the bell notification icon next to it. So ironically last week I was actually I produced a video discussing some of the acts which would fall foul of the representation of the people act 1983 one of them was as you might expect bribery and lo and behold the conservative government are now being investigated by the police on the basis of an accusation of bribery now at the moment it's no more than that now this centers around events from a week ago which culminated in Nigel Farage withdrawing hundreds of Brexit Party candidates from Conservative held seats. The narrative from Farage up to this point was that either Boris Johnson agrees to a pact with him or he's going to field 600 candidates all around the country on the basis that Boris Johnson's Brexit withdrawal agreement was terrible. This is what the Brexit Party official line was. Boris Johnson's uh, withdrawal agreement is absolutely dreadful. He's going to deliver a form of Brexit that is worse than not leaving at all. The usual thing. But then last Monday the Brexit party withdrew 317 candidates. Now I say withdrew they had never been registered in the first place it's just that these were 317 seats where the Brexit party said they were not going to field candidates. Now time would tell whether they ever would have done anyway or would have done would have done it in all of them but certainly that was what they were saying they were going to put up candidates in all of these seats and now they weren't. And this was a move that of course helps the Conservatives enormously but Johnson had not agreed to any pact. He hadn't done any deal with Nigel Farage. So now it looks like Farage is backing down now, doesn't it? That the Brexit party was just a flash in the pan, even more short-lived than UKIP, which is currently limping its way to oblivion with just 45 candidates being fielded for next month's general election. I wonder how many of them will even get their deposit back. So what made Farage do it? Well, to my mind, it was clear he was instructed to do it. Bear in mind that neither Johnson nor Farage have any control over Brexit. They're merely the public puppets dancing to someone else's tune. But Johnson has a little more autonomy than Farage. So last Sunday, Boris Johnson announced his Super Canada Deal Plus. And there was nothing in this. Just a name. No proposals published. Nothing. But it allowed Farage to claim to his dwindling supporters that Johnson had improved his deal and that his vision for Brexit was now more in line with Farage's and now I think we can tentatively support it. That was the general idea. Because Brexit from day one has been entirely about perceptions, not about reality at all. It's all about what can you get people to believe. And that explains how Farage could make his decision and save face. Because now he can say, well, what I was opposed to was Boris Johnson's form of Brexit, but now he's come around to my way of thinking, so he can claim, and obviously, I mean, this makes sense to anyone, even a Brexit supporter. Obviously, if I stand candidates against him, we're just going to split the vote and make it more difficult for a Brexit alliance to form in Westminster. So that was fine. That allowed him to do that. But it didn't do anything to explain what Boris Johnson actually did to persuade Nigel Farage. Because you know as well as I do, Nigel Farage has not read this Super Canada Plus deal because it doesn't exist, hasn't been published. There are no proposals. So that can't have actually swayed him. So what did? Well, in an interview, Nigel Farage claimed that senior figures in the Conservative Party and the government more specifically offered him a peerage, a place in the House of Lords, which is a strange thing to try and bribe Nigel Farage with because in the House of Lords, unless he had a specific role, which he wouldn't do, there's no salary attached to it. There's no money. Um, you do get allowances, but they are based on attending. So in order to build up a decent amount of money, and you, I don't think you would ever get what he would call a decent amount of money. Certainly not gonna, anything that's going to compensate for his MEP salary. Then um, he'd have to actually attend. Well, we know he doesn't like attending these assemblies. He likes to just have the position and then just cause trouble and do nothing. Now... In addition, later on in the week, Anne Widdecombe, who is a former Tory MP and now Brexit Party MEP, she claimed that she was offered a role in Brexit talks in exchange for standing down. 
So you've got a situation where Nigel Farage has been offered a peerage if he withdraws candidates. Anne Widdecombe is being offered a role in, effectively, in not, not exactly government, but as part of the government negotiating team, if she stands down. Now, if true, then they could be criminal acts. Certainly the offer of a peerage definitely would be. So before I go any further, I know what some of you are going to be thinking at this point. How can anything seriously come of an investigation when it's based purely on the public statements of a known liar like Nigel Farage? Well, quite. One person's word against another is ropey enough in any investigation, or trial certainly, but when the words in question are from Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, who is of course denying that such an offer was made, then you are obviously going to get nowhere. Surely the only way such an investigation could get anywhere is if the offer were recorded and someone in possession of a copy of that record leaked it. Now that is possible. After all, I wouldn't say that either Johnson's government or Farage's Brexit party are at all cautious in their activities. They are blinded to the law by their own arrogance that they will always get away with it. An arrogance that it has to be said has served them well so far. And it also has to be said that the police and the Crown Prosecution Service have not exactly been robust in pressing their duty when the lawbreakers or suspected lawbreakers have been members of the Conservative government. Although the Metropolitan Police have finally passed a file of evidence to the CPS on the illegal conduct of Johnson's Vote Leave campaign, it took a very long time and nothing has happened with it since. In addition, the Conservatives broke spending rules in both the 2015 and 2017 general elections and absolutely nothing was done about it. So when there's robust documentary evidence of criminality and nobody is charged, what chance a serious investigation based on the say-so of the duplicitous Nigel Farage? I mean, none whatsoever, surely. So what is likely to happen? Well, with the investigation, I'm quite sure nothing at all. After a discreet period, maybe even later this week, they will have interviewed persons of interest and concluded that there is no evidence of unlawful behaviour. I mean, who do the police even talk to? Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, of course, I suppose, but who else? I noticed that Nigel Farage has been a little coy about where exactly the offers have come from. He has named Sir Edward Lister as someone who has made some of the offers. Apparently a whole raft of potential Brexit party candidates were offered peerages or post-Brexit roles in return for stepping down. Sir Edward had been Boris Johnson's chief political strategist since he became Prime Minister. Uh, not a name you're likely to have heard of though, not, not to the same level of Dominic Cummings, because it's not really believed that Johnson is paying any attention to him whatsoever. Simply paying him for the public purse for doing, what well, I don't know if he doesn't actually listen to a strategic analyst. Now, it's possible that Johnson would use him for a gopher to pass on offers to Brexit party candidates. Might as well use him for something. But I'm not sure what the police would do when they go and talk to him and he just refuses it ever happened. After all, even if there's proof that Sir Edward went and talked to Brexit party potential candidates, that's not suspicion in itself. Boris Johnson is known to have been persuading the Brexit party not to field candidates in his target seats. Nothing illegal in that, by the way, before candidates have been registered. It's only once candidates have been registered that it becomes an illegal act to try and persuade them to stand down, withdraw, whatever. But with Farage just giving that one name and, and him saying that he's the one who made some of the offers, not all of them, um, and is not really naming the people who could actually follow through on such a promise, in other words, government ministers and ultimately the prime minister himself, then there isn't really much to go on, is there? So the police don't really have that much in the way of names to interview. But probably what it will do is make Nigel Farage look like a right tit. When the police interview him, he presumably either has to stick to his story but refuse to name the people involved. Well, I'm no legal expert, but isn't that obstruction to justice? To deliberately conceal knowledge of a crime is a crime itself. What Farage would be claiming is a criminal offence has been committed and he'd be claiming that he has information on it, but wouldn't give it to the police, therefore defending the criminals. Hmm. His alternative is to admit that he was lying in the interview. It's not illegal, I've already verified this, it is not illegal to lie to the public under any circumstances. Um, so he could just admit that he was lying in the interview, and that does a couple of things. One, it means that he has to own up to being a liar in full public view of his supporters. Two, possibly means he's wasted police time. 
I've not heard that the investigation has been dropped yet. If Farage was lying, yeah, I know, shock horror, then surely he should have contacted the police as soon as the investigation was announced to go, no, 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 no need to investigate. I was actually just making it up. But he hasn't done that. So either way, Nigel Farage should be in a spot of bother over, over this. Unless, of course, he has proof of the offer. If it actually happened and he's got proof um, and hands it over to the police, well, okay. Uh, but in that case, Boris Johnson will be in trouble and Farage will have damaged the Brexit alliance for this coming general election, which I'm sure will go down like a lead balloon amongst his backers. And however this turns out, I just don't know what compelled Farage to make the peerage offer claim. After all, he wasn't, he wasn't using it to justify his surrender from Tory seats. He used Johnson's made-up Super Canada Plus deal for that. What possible advantage did the claim give him, does he think? At worst, this has the potential to see him pressed on either obstruction of justice or wasting police time charges. And at best, just make him look bloody stupid in public. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.